How do everyone? Welcome back to the Potty Mouth Garden Club. Yes, live. We're live. It's good. I'm, I'm just checking something's bounced up. Yes, we've got 14 in, in already. Wow, everyone. Nice. Lovely to have you in. Thank you very much. Everyone that's watching at seven o'clock, get your asses in the, earlier, please. That would be fantastic. JB, <laughs> how are you doing, sir? Hello, hello. I'm very warm. I've been busy. I've been working on the back of the house. I've not had time to do my makeup. <laughs> oh. I'm glad I set a phone reminder for Potty Mouth, so I'm here on time. <laughs> Jimmy, you I'd seen a picture in our chat, and am I right in thinking, is that the right, you've got scaffolding in the back of the house, and you're up yes, on the... Yes, correct. So you've put the scaffolding up, and you're doing the work oh, on no, the no, roof? No. Or are you just going we... up there for the publicity shot? <laughs> so we had, uh, we had some rogue traders in, actually. It was really serious. They did a load of damage to our roof. Um proper criminal case and all that all right all that jazz yeah it's been quite serious um so we had to get the scaffolding in i didn't put it up myself <laughs> can you imagine it'll be a nightmare um but yeah we got <laughs> the scaffolding be in videos be <laughs> <a lot of. laughs> me Fuck trying that. to balance this like 20 foot long scaffolding <laughs> ball, like, <"Way."> um <laughs> yes no so we got some scaffolding in and we got a, a reefer in to fix the damage but there's loads of other bits i need to do on the back of the house while the scaffolding is up like fixing the gutters we've got some like repointing to do which i've been doing today which is a <laughs> have you done any of this one. before gb oh, you no never... it's you, know, <laughs> you learn on the job don't you it's gone okay it's gone okay touch wood um, wow. it's setting now so um yeah and lots of other just boring house stuff on the menu for for this week well gb it's lovely to have you here really is thank you jesse thank you how are you doing, Jess? Good. Nice to have you. Yes, good, good. I, how, I realised for some reason I'm my name is G. <laughs> yes, yes, um, G. <laughs> Fab. I don't know. Just stuck with the E's on that one, but yeah. Hi. <laughs> Hello. Yes, nobody will have you back. Hey, my honestly, you don't have to go off quick. Do you know what I mean? You can so oh. much bloody bang Monday again, Monday again. So yeah, Audrey. Yes. Audrey. Hello, hello. How are you? How are you? Bring some sensibility to this show. I, I will are we, try. Are we, are we I good? Will try. Are we We're good? Great. It's oh, beautiful right. today. Yes. Good morning. Well, what I was going to ask is, do you think, because, you know, this now this time, and I'll, Audrey, I'll come to you first, because I think and you're probably in that zone where we have a glut. Now, I'm, I'm not really having the glut. You know, I'm getting a nice crop. Well, obviously, I mean, cabbages, I only planted four in a bed. You know, right. I did roast them after you <laughs> talked about it last week, mind you, and they all liked it. Oh, man, went down a, a storm. But I'm not getting this glut. Are you getting the like a, a glut, Audrey? Like, it's like just coming out in your waves? Not like I want. Mm -hmm. No, they're, they're just not. Again, I think this was one of the most challenging growing years I've ever had. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're going to the farmer's market later this week. Never. And I'm going to purchase a glut <laughs> so that I have a few things that need to be canned. So, yeah, yeah I've only wow. got, I think, two bags of uh, tomatoes in the freezer. I mean, I usually go through like 20 bags of mm -hmm. tomatoes in the freezer. So we're wow. going to go buy a bushel of um nice roma tomatoes and maybe a bushel of onions i mean i've gotten onions but it's not a crop i mean i i it sure is not that's going to get me through winter no so we're going to go buy some it, and uh yeah i'm filling in pretty heavy with farmer's market stuff right wow that's yeah. that's i didn't expect that to be honest audrey i, I thought you would be the one i i've know, never we... had to do that yeah mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. Doggone it! I'm doing it this year, and yeah. uh, my my cucumbers are coming in pretty speedily, but not enough that I would pickle anything or mm. do anything with them. So, yeah, I'm I'm pretty disappointed with the the overall harvest. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, I wonder I wonder as well, Audrey, if like the farmers market is a little bit. You know, like sparse, should we say? Because I was thinking this in like growers yeah. in general. From the pictures I've seen, uh, they've got boatloads. Right. <laughs> so, I mean, these are professional farmers too. So it's a whole different ballgame. But they have trucks and trucks and trucks of fresh, uh, just pick corn. 
and trucks of tomatoes and mm -hmm. yeah it's crazy nice so i'm gonna go have a good time uh, i think on thursday and uh, so, see if i could drag hubby with me has, has this happened box for me? yeah has this happened <laughs> before then audrey for you has it uh i don't recall us ever having to go there to um like fill in what we didn't get right Wow. So this is this is kind of new. I've gone there for if I was trying some specific new canning thing mm -hmm. that I wanted to see if it worked and give it a you know give it a fair shot. I would pick up some things there to do it, but I wouldn't be buying bushels. And mm -hmm. this year I'm going to be picking up some big bushels. So wow. yeah, wow, yeah, from the Queen you know. Gardener over there in Detroit, eh? It's yeah. rock. Detroit's rocked. Shocked it's, to the very core. I'm shocked. I'm shocked. Yeah. It'll be it'll be like a hush, you know, and like the farmer's market, and then all of a sudden Audrey <laughs> comes in, it'll be like, what's she what doing here? Yeah. <gasps> the Queen Gardener's in. Buying. Oh my god. Buying. Oh, yeah, they'll be, they'll no, be flocking to you, Audrey. They'll I be know. flocking. <laughs> Well, I'm 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 saddened, but I'm so glad that there is a resource like that so close. Yeah, mm -hmm. that I can I can do that. Mine, oh. we've got like farmery markety shops here, but they're just like a fortune. You know what I mean? They have like they have all the condiments, all the nice condiments on the shelves. You know, all the kind sure. of fancy chili, and they're just like there was one. <laughs> Like I fancied this, and Melanie not let us even get it. But, like it was a banana <laughs> chili sauce. I don't know if anyone and it was eight pound for a little bottle. And I was like, oh, would that be nice just to try it? Banana? No, we're not. We're not. Stick with the <laughs> sriracha, two ninety five and Aldi. You know what I mean? Yes, <laughs> oh. well, are we having a glut down? Sorry, Audrey, I was just going to ask Jess if are you having a glut down there yet or? I'm just. I'm really struggling with the concept of a banana condiment at the moment. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I wanted to ask questions about that. So. <laughs> Is this Isn't the banana, banana chili? It was, or... it, was, it, was, it, was, it was actually advertised. You know, on over here, Audrey, and if anyone's watching, we've got like a, the Aldi shop. Now, there's an Aldi program where buyers or makers of a certain product will go up against each other. And one of them was this, this lady who made this a mother's, grandmother's Jamaican recipe that was a banana's and chilies made this like chili sauce with bananas in. Oh. And I, and I went, oh, that's cool. Oh. And then we yeah. see, we didn't see it in Aldi. We seen it in, I think it was Fennec. We were passing the Fennec <laughs> food hall and it was in there for eight ninety five, I think it was. And it was a, you know, like a bottle, like a, a sauce bottle. To a hot was it a sauce. banana or a plantain? I mean, it seems like yeah, a plantain. No, no, bananas, bananas. Wow. And I guess was, I assume banana chili. So I was thinking it was kind chili, of labeled like, it banana ketchup. I'm sure if you just even Google it, banana oh, ketchup. Oh, that beans. is that, that does. Uh, I don't blame yeah? what's, my what's, wife. What's, saying, no. no, no. Have Tomato. a look, Jamie. Yeah. Have a look for banana chili. Uh, banana. Looking, yeah, I, I feel like it would it, it would oh. be so difficult to keep the color correct if you because if you use bananas in a recipe they just go this horrible color right well it was, like, no, 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 it was like a, a nice it was like a nice light crimson sauce yeah. oh. mm -hmm. so they added turmeric to keep the color nice uh, it wasn't like a banana color it was you know those tomatoes in there as well to make it you know like a tomato -y sauce ketchup -y well, hot that sauce just, that's just getting worse when you say you're adding <laughs> bananas <laughs> Sounds like a real problem with bananas anyway. So the idea of one mushed up with other things is all like, oh, no, 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 no. Would you not? Honestly, is that not? Does that not get? See, I would, yeah. I would honestly think a banana in a in a chili sauce would be have that like little sweet kick. Oh. Which... I'd try it. I feel I'd like maybe in a, a fresh, honey. in a fresh I'd situation, put a little but honey, but preserved banana? banana, you know, in a bottle that is giving me the. Um, no, I, I don't even thought. like there being a banana in the house. I oh, right. It's it. that bad for yeah, bananas. Also, oh, you don't like bananas <laughs> on any level. I really can't stand bananas. Even the oh. smell of a banana is like, oh. 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 Wow. No. Oh. Okay, better I like cancel, bananas. Better but... cancel that Christmas present of eight <laughs> bottles of <laughs> banana <laughs> <laughs> chili sauce in. Rather quickly. I'll get oh, your money back. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so, 
But going going back to your question about glut, uh, this no, not at all. Like this time last year, I thought last year was a pretty tough year, particularly for like my tomatoes. I thought I had hardly anything. I haven't had anything yet this year. You know, like it's that really it's that still. Moment. Well, I've had like probably four or five cherry tomatoes. That's oh. been about it. And the tomato plants are covered in tomatoes. It's just nothing's there yet. Like wow. everything is still green. Uh, but the beans, I'd say French beans this year, we have had a serious, genuine glut of like mm -hmm. bags and bags and bags of them. We've been giving them away in kilo bags, like down the road to, to wow. everybody. Um, but that has been the only thing, not even courgettes, like not even courgette glut at Glad all. it's not just me. Yeah. Man. Oh. Well, <laughs> hopefully I can play this. Jess sent in the in our. So let's just see if I can play this. This is Jess hey. demonstrate. I don't know if it's going to work or not. Demonstrating. Let me show you. One <clears> sec. <throat> is, it, is it working? Can anyone see it? The suspense is killing us. Not yet. Oh. <laughs> there it is. Something. There we go. Wow. Oh, magic! Look at that, man! We'll have another one. Can do another one. This is a big <laughs> one. That's even quite big, you know. Top and tail. That is a big bean. Yeah, it's not only for the little ones. Wow, wow. that's love it. That's impressive. <laughs> You weren't lying, Jesse. You got to hand it. No, I think, Jess, I apologise. You know what I mean? Where, what can I do to make up? Wow. That, I can't believe that because they were going through so quick. Yeah, Not even no, like... There's no... It just, just glides through. They were yeah, impressive beans. There's like another it. video as well where Jess is chopping them up there, but that's the, the meat of the matter there. Man, impressive. <laughs> Was yours not working, Tony? Just because you'd picked it too long ago and well, it had gone a bit. Uh, I, I think it was. I think it was user error. If I'm honest, Jay, but I think it was a bit of like you. You know what I mean? Just like you know, you just you, some people are just not like, and I'm be dexterous. You know what I mean? Some people are just all fingers and thumbs, and I think I was just kind of <laughs> not. You know what I mean? It was. It was a. It was a kitchen <laughs> instrument tool that was just beyond me. <laughs> stick to a knife. Stick to a knife. Well, it's nice, just that you've had, you've had like, a good. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because I haven't. Um, I've got the odd one of you know the odd the lot of bean coming there, but nothing fancy there. Nothing on the the, the runner beans really. Just the odd one. And by yeah. the time there's a few, that the they're going over. Do you know what I mean? They're going that stringy kind of. But I had a, a comment. Why I'm asking? I had a comment. You know, and it was just like. He'd been growing for years. This, I forget the gentleman's name, and he's t exactly like yours, Jess. Tomatoes are green still. It, you know what I mean? The worst in twelve. He's seen the worst in twelve years of, of these like known gardening. And I thought, oh, I can believe that. Mm -hmm. So, Jess, you know when you said your tomatoes are all green? Are they green but a size, a nice size, or they're just still like pea size? Uh, some of them are now coming along. I'd say if you'd asked me that like a week ago, I would have just been like, oh, my God, it's just awful. <laughs> but actually, because we've had a bit of, you know, warmth, they are coming on now, actually, because it's surprising how quick they do grow. Um, the Atomic Fusion is looking really good. I've got like three mm. really big trusses on right. there. That each of the because I was expecting them to be closer to the size of the Atomic Grape. But actually, they're really quite a lot bigger. Like each one of the tomatoes is sort of this sort of size. What and colour are they? Well, they're green and black at the moment. Fusion. There's no, there's green. no even hint of uh, orange or red on there. They're completely. Okay. Did but anybody they're, they're, they're see? Did, I was going to just say, did anyone see GB was trying to pass off a tomato that he said it was a Brad's atomic, and it didn't look like a Brad's atomic to me. GB, yeah. I don't know where. It's a Brad something. They're a Brad something. I don't know what they are, but they're they're a Brad something. But they're they're orange and green. Um, Do you mean they're they're bred by Brad Gates? Yeah, well, they're or, they're one okay, of the ones so you sent me, I think. Okay, Audrey. so they're from Wild Boar Farms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, but so I can't really I can remember if they were. Yeah, I couldn't remember if they were a grape or a fusion. Oh, okay. 
trying to get into the Brad Grape Society there with that thing, wasn't it? You know what I mean? You weren't a, you weren't a member of the club with us. That's a that hokey little thing. <laughs> well, I see that actually asking what? how much a bushel is. Yes, someone was asking in the chat. Well, technically, it's four pecks. But that is Pardon? equally as useless. <laughs> I know uh, that's it's, like, it's kind of like old worldy uh, numbers, but it's about eight gallons, I would guess. Wow. So a lot. Yeah, it's a yeah. Bushels definitely um, a lot to work through. Yes. And how many mm. bushels of tomatoes are you going to go for? Oh, I think just one. All right. I'll do right. one bushel because like I still plenty. have a lot of tomato stuff on the you know that's already canned up. So, but I have a few things I want to try this year. So Audrey, I need I've, some, still, I've made yeah. that sauce again, you know, that sauce, that red sauce. We'll is... never make another one, I'm telling you. No, no, it's it's, it's absolutely best. we're having it's the um best. we're doing actually you know, I got a, a a pizza oven from Uno's where we my son's made I'm, the dough. I'm trying tonight. to get one of those. Oh yeah. <laughs> I, I'm trying to do that. How do you do that? <laughs> yeah. I don't want e-bikes. I don't want ten e-bikes. Yeah. I just I've want got a, I've got a I've got a, a phone there to do. I've got just landed the day. Uh, um, I've got a phone. Good. It's a rugged one, Goodness. so you can throw it and drop it around. But wow. someone, some some companies just sent us a double <laughs> air fryer. So there's a double air fryer in the kitchen. <laughs> I just bought one of those. I have oh, well, actually, my daughter, <laughs> yeah. you know, my daughter's clocked it straight. Oh, Dad, when you're finished, when you're finished, I'll, oh, that would be lovely. <laughs> As Melanie's like, it'll not go on our benches. It'll be tucked away in the cupboard, so <laughs> and my daughter will get it. What was I talking oh, about? My. Oh, have you had any glut then, JB? Have, have you? Are you getting I would say some? we're just we're just starting with a tomato glut, which is very very pleasing. Um, we're just starting to get to the point where there's quite a lot on the kitchen table that we need to find something to do with. Um, most of them so far have been the cherries, the earlier varieties, mm -hmm. so um, not great for canning um, or anything like that, but we might do try Audrey's kind of roasted sauce or figure, figure something else mm -hmm. to do with them. Um, but I haven't actually bought my canning supplies yet. I do, I do still need to do that. That's on the to-do list this year. But in terms of everything else, no. Maybe, maybe brassicas. We've had like plenty and plenty of cabbage to get through which has been really nice um although same some of that has not been grown by myself i was going to say you showed a picture in the, showed a picture in our, in our in everyone's in our chat with our in the whatsapp group and i was like oh that is jb well done that's then, a good looking cabbage. Then there was a note at the bottom of, of the, the note. This one's me near, Baz. I thought, what are you putting it in your pile for? That was it. It was just it. for the, the aesthetic. I had to put yeah. it in. Is that, yeah, and are you so using funny. that as a thumbnail by any chance? No. <laughs> I'm very honest about it in the video. I did record a video for that one ages ago, like last Wednesday. Um, and yeah, I did say in the video that was donated by a, a neighbor. They um they went to our local allotment show, um, which I've never been to before. I didn't even know it was on. Kind of passed me by, but they cleared up. They had like biggest cabbage. They got five other gold medals. Right. It was their first time at the show. And they were so pleased. And there were all the old timers who've been going for years and years, <laughs> like giving them evils. You know, like who are these newcomers with their big fat cabbages? <laughs> And so, I mean, they gave, I picked the smallest one. Um, that one, that one in the harvest photo is the smallest one, and it was huge, wow. absolutely huge. So, um, yeah, not too many gluts, but the tomatoes are, are really starting to hot up. And what about your your chilies? Are they all on track still, to be good? Yeah, they're looking they're looking really good, but um, they're still a little while away from. The, the big harvests um mm -hmm. the way i've got it set up is i normally expect my harvest kind of towards the end of september as the season starts to turn for the chilies um so they're all there was an early fruiting from where i got the the potting up a little bit late so there was a little bit of a forced flash from from some of the varieties but now most of them have, have done the right thing the thing i want them to do just getting a really big growing vegetation and there's quite a few flowers on there now, so the timing's looking pretty good. Oh, nice to know. Nice to know. And you will I'm be taking photographs of your own chilies. <laughs> oh, yes. 
Well, right. no one else on the allotment <laughs> grows chilies like me, so that's that's my one claim to fame, thankfully. I was going to say about the, about the flowering on the chilies. I've never had this many flowers on oh, nice. like chili plants. This, this, some of the chilies are only like this big and like coming through, but yeah, the flowering they're just covered, which is really nice. I think there's a bit of a quad grow um, input in there. Yeah, they look, look fantastic. Very good. I've had a lot, JB, of, of like the flowers dropping off. Is that okay? Or... Yeah, that's pretty common. Um, it's an issue if all of them are dropping off and it can be caused by kind of temperature or humidity issues. But generally, you're going to get a, a large percentage of the flowers that fall off. And it, just think of it as the same. As, it's, it's not the same as tomatoes where you kind of want every flower. You know that a, a tomato plant can support every truss almost, you know. Um, chilies are a bit different and they're, better thought of it more like an apple tree you know where they drop a load of fruit and mm -hmm. it means that they focus on a, a smaller number of um i mean it seemed more like, but i did notice like a lot of like flowers on the you know i was like i thought every one mm. of them would be it's a chili normal. but you know what i mean oh, yeah right. it's quite it's quite common I mean, when you said temperatures there i was telling audrey before we kind of rocked on and switched on that we you know we went camping at the weekend just yes. gone there and we were in like, the tent the, the, honestly, G, I was telling you, honestly, GB, the tent, so different to like putting up a tent when we did it with the kids. Do you know what I mean? I literally, the tent was up, I'm going to see it in 12 minutes. Wow. It just, you Fair. pump it up with air and it's there's no metal poles, nothing like that. So it's up. So then you can just like unpack. I think we had two tables, two chairs and two beds. And it was basically done. Do you know what I mean? And it was wow. just like... And putting it away, it actually went in the bag that it was supplied with. <laughs> you know what I mean? That was like, because normally it's just like you Gold can't style. get them in. Yeah, it never fits, does it? That's but, awesome. Yeah, yeah. But we were in, like, right in kind of Ribblesdale, Yorkshire. Do you know what I mean? So, like, Ribblesdale, like, viaduct train bridge. And the temperature on the night, it went down to eight, I, was, I think it was eight degrees, felt like five on the thingy. It was. <clears throat> Freezing, I pinched. I pinched. Right when we're in the, I took the dog's blanket off her, so I can have it. That's how. That's how. And honestly, I was like, if anyone's growing chilies or tomatoes around there, you know, it was Baltic, and I was like, this is August. This is like the height of the yeah. summer, and it's like the temperature saying feels like five degrees. And bah, even in the oh, morning, wow. you know what I mean? It was like, you know, you do that, and it's like that mist comes. It's just like con. Oh, wow. Wow. There is a chill in the air in the mornings now. Mm -hmm. I don't like it. Oh, I know. But this was just oh, all. And then, then there was the, the usual thunder and lightning. You know what I mean? That happened when we were camping as well. So At least we didn't have the metal poles in the tent. I, I know. Missed us by. Mind you, when we, when we drove out, there was, I mean, we were all tucked up in cosy warm when it was like thunder. So it was quite nice to hear it. It was so loud on the tent, the, the noise. But when we drove out to, to leave, there was about five or six tents in the rubbish bin, you know, where okay, oh, no. and, and we heard stories and because my daughter, they were camping a few miles away where they had this fancy tent, a family, and they ended up sleeping in the car because it was a it oh. was just leaked and rained and they were just that was it. They were going home and one night and that was it. They were off home. So oh, no. picked a nice weekend, but... <laughs> So still good, still good, still got, still keen on it. You know what I mean? Still keen. So, JB, JB, I seen a very Hello. moving. I seen a very moving. If anybody wants to go and join JB and Jess's period on there, JB put a lovely letter up just saying, "Give oh, it up." That? Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Give so it up. And is... I was like, but it was it was a lovely post, JB, because it, it you do sometimes feel like that, and I love. I mean, I'd love you to kind of explain. Because mm -hmm. you're not giving up, but you're just going to... You've told yeah, people I'm stepping that's back. enough. I'm enough. stepping back. <laughs> so um, I, I, did a, I recorded a video last Wednesday, and I haven't had time to edit it yet. But um, I didn't really you know, have a plan, as I often don't with videos. But um, <laughs> I, I have so much on at the moment. And having just working too much since like February, I was just like... A few weeks ago at work, I was just like, I'm properly burnt out. Um, I had lots of comments a little while back when I was talking about, um, you know, working too much and struggling with um, keeping up with the plot. I feel like I've done a pretty good job on the plot considering. Um, 
but lots of comments from people saying, oh, do, do be careful, don't burn out sort of thing. And so I could see it, it was coming and it got to the point, um, we're off now. So Wednesday, I've been off from work since Wednesday. I've got a week and a half off. Um, and it's all time that I've accrued, you know, so we don't get paid overtime, but we do get time off in lieu. And I've got like 12 days to take off in that at the moment, um, just where I've been working so much. And uh, yeah, I was at the allotment and we've got so I've got this week off and we've got so much to do on the house. And I was just like, I think the best thing for me to do is just focus on what's already in the ground, make sure it's watered and fed and make sure I'm harvesting stuff. And that's it. You know, I'm giving up on weeding or, <laughs> you know, manicuring the plot of like streaming and mowing and sewing, especially, you know, just like I'm not doing anything other than the absolute bare minimum that I have to at the plot. And I sort of had that realization on Wednesday as I was filming and it was like a weight was lifted off my mind, you know. Mm. And now I, I went down to the plot this morning just to sort of water and check on the on the polytunnel and everything. And it's like freedom. You know, it's just like mm -hmm. all I really care about now is like walking in, seeing the chili, seeing the tomatoes, getting a nice harvest and then going home. <laughs> and it's it's really nice. You know, it just feels like the, the weight has been taken off, basically. And I think that's going to be my plan probably <laughs> until the end of September. You know, just recharge a bit, just take the pressure off probably go to the allotment maybe twice a week um and i'll still enjoy it while i'm there that's the important thing you know i don't i don't want it to be i don't want to force myself to be there too much and it starts to feel like a chore you know in somewhere that you actually don't like being because mm -hmm. it can kind of i think when that happens it can kind of change your relationship with the allotment a little bit i still want it to feel like a positive i think it's place. nice that you're kind of you've, you've mm -hmm. spotted it jb and spotted it before you've get really sickened yourself and walked away completely yeah. you know what i mean it's just, and it's i was gonna say it's nice that you've got things there to see the beauty of a garden do you know what i mean so yes. you can see the yeah, thing yeah. The, the chilies and the, you know what i mean so i'm and just wondering still be there when um, when the when the mojo and the energy fully returns which i'm hoping won't be too long um you know it's just a bit of it's a bit more ripping out and it might be a, the 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 only like potential issue is you know now is the window for a lot of winter sowing and that kind of thing. But I don't care. <laughs> I don't, you know, I'm just at the point where I'm like, ah, oh, who cares? You know, I'll have shed loads of other stuff to, to be doing over winter. Uh, and, um, you know, if I haven't got a few things. You know who your best funny. friend is? Just go again is. in spring. Like, yes, yeah, exactly. Just go again in spring. What was, what was that, Jess? I was just saying, yeah, just go again in spring. Mm -hmm. Like, just... <laughs> Well, I was going to yeah. say your best friend, JB, when you're walking away from weeds, is, is weed killer. You know what I mean? If you want to just, well, just you know what I mean? Yeah, kill it all. Kill it all and wonder about it next some year. Stuff, there's some stuff which I might end up resorting, like the bindweed. That There mm. is a plot next door to my, my kind of extended plot, you know, with the polytunnel, and the amount of bindweed that is slowly, like, crawling through mm. the path, like, <laughs> it's looking a bit scary. Um, we might need to end up resorting to the weed killer for that one. But uh, yes, I'm I'm looking forward to just that ripping out phase. You know, when you get to that stage, it's a little bit early for most people, I think. But I am really looking forward to starting to just rip a load of stuff out, getting the beds cleared, chucking loads of manure on there, getting excited for next year, mm -hmm. all that good mm -hmm. stuff. You know, but and Mamie, Mum, you know, like she taught me loads, but she would always like lock up the allotment. You know, months like you know, end of June, July, it was you know things were starting to fear. That was it, and plants didn't get a second look in. If even if they had a few, you know, that's it. We'll get this cleared up and get it done. And you know, so, yeah, yeah, oh. yeah. So, you don't just, have to do it that way, but I think if if you if you have to, it's okay. You mm -hmm. know, you don't have to feel the pressure all the time to always be getting maximum productivity out of the well, plot or anything like that. GB, I mean, there's still, I forget how many beds are empty of mine this year. Do you know what I mean? Mm. I, I think yeah, there's yeah. about six, you know what I mean? And it's, there's no, you know, I put the cardboard down so it really releases the pressure. Do you know what I mean? Because I would get a little bit freaky with weeds and that. But mm -hmm. yeah, It's just lovely to kind of, you know, the whole idea was to step away a little bit this year, do you know what I mean? And with the quads and everything like that. And it's it's nice, to be honest. It's lovely. Yeah, I'm yeah. Like the, the pressure to go up. You know, I haven't been up since we've been back yet. You know what I mean? I, I watered all the quads, so hopefully everything over there is up okay, though. So, Jess, do you ever get like this? Does, does, does it ever hit you where are you just like 
never um i'm finding a bit frustrating at the moment because the the uh, digging up situation hasn't stopped it's just every day like this morning i oh. went up there and another five beds have been done so at the moment it's a little bit like as you're walking towards it, it's just a bit like what am i going to find today uh, but actually i don't um i don't know if i don't if i've sort of said i'm going up i don't know thursday friday saturday or something and i i don't go i've got mum like on my case <laughs> when are we going like, so i don't really it's, I don't really have a choice. And I really don't feel like going, but um, I've take I've started taking quite a few days. Like I've shifted it so that I'm doing quite a few bits and pieces that aren't being filmed, which does change it. I mean, I know we've discussed this before, but it it changes the process so much when you're filming because you're not actually. You know the joy of like if you're in a really foul mood and you just go and do a bit of weeding or you go and do a bit of seed sowing or something and it just totally takes your mind off it because it's an activity. Um, mm. If you're filming it, you don't get that same mm -hmm. like thing with the weeding. Mm. So, not that I love weeding, that came across wrong. <laughs> I don't love weeding. It's not like, but you know what I mean. So I've been going up and doing some bits and pieces and like fixing stuff which hasn't been filmed, and then that's like. Yeah, that's kind of mixed it up a bit. But the the, the I've I now know what I'm going to do with the with the fox deterrent things. So um, I've just got to go and actually order the stuff because I went to B and Q last week and it was completely useless. I went to the massive B and Q in New Malden. That's like, I mean, you could get lost in there for a week and yet they <laughs> didn't have what we wanted. So that was annoying. Oh. So, do yeah. you, yeah, right though, just. Because there's, there's been loads of people asking, are you still getting bothered with the foxes, like, constantly? Every day. Oh, yeah. Crazy. Wow, man. It's like two, two days this week, we went up there and nothing had been touched apart from the paths. Like, the paths had just been churned up. It's like someone's gone over with a rotavator um, in, like, big, big areas of it. But, yeah, nothing had been touched in the beds. And we sort of thought that maybe because we'd started... Um, I don't know if you know, like the, the coverings that we've got at the allotment at the moment, it's all a bit hodgepodge, but then everything's mm. got netting like stretched over it and it's tent pegged down into the beds yeah. mm -hmm. and they're getting in between the bed and the netting. Um, and we started pegging into the ground outside the bed. So the netting went all the way down to the, to right. the base, which we thought might stop them, you know, getting a nose underneath, but um, we thought we had solved it, but we haven't. <laughs> Oh, no. and then they're just like ripping it all up all over the place again so um but i've been arming and ahhing a lot about whether to go for a perimeter fence or individual bed coverings and i just don't think the perimeter fence is going to work foxes jump yeah. too high like one meter 80 like i can't put like a two and a half meter fence around the whole plot it's just not going to work so yeah I'm going for individual bed covers Nice. And, and what you're going to use, just like the pictures you showed with last week, because last week you showed like a vintage photograph from your allotment that had like proper wooden built structures over your, over your beds. Yeah, hmm. I've sort of thought about it, but I think I can do it cheaper um, with with plastic, with hoops, but hoops that that connect down onto the top of the. Uh, the top of the bed so this is what i'm going to be doing this week in the video but everything's going to be it's because it's, it's that connection between the bottom of the netting and the bed where the problem is so i'm just going to make like a complete frame that flips up sideways off so the like hinged bed. hinged wow yeah. okay and nice. do it with pipe so if i use pipe uh, pipe rings it means i don't have to have like a proper wooden hinge i can just have a pipe ring that it will flip mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Ah. that's the idea anyway i'm going to do a prototype this week and see if it will work but i would i wish luck. you had your i wish you had your camera so we could sit you know what i mean like your 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 nighttime camera you know your, your trail camera set up on on your new one and like oh it's working it's working it's work it's, oh no <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah this is so annoying <laughs> But the thing I with the is like they just because they jump so high. Like I know you've been having all these problems, JB, as well. But like, and they're really cute. Was saying, they? oh, you need to put a, you need to put pallets all the way around the outside of your plot. But actually, 
that just encouraged them because they've got something to jump onto. Yeah, yeah. To, to jump off. But I did, I did like GB's idea last week was like kind of pig netting or whatever on this just you know on the surface yeah. no netting but then you, you've got your butterflies to kind of contend with so the car yeah, so everything mm. has to be covered anyway to a certain mm -hmm. extent uh which is why we've got the netting over i mean i think that i think we've only got one bed that doesn't have netting over it anyway wow. um because everything just gets eaten by pigeons um so mm. considering that we have to have it covered just combine the two that's the idea anyway but we'll see, we'll see. i mean if it's any if it's any i've got more tubing <laughs> lying around <laughs> yeah. what happened then jb about your we were talking and audrey's into the the david austin tell me about the david austin oh, yes. yes well <laughs> Not ideal. So uh, what day was it? Friday, I think we went up to David Austin, which is a fair old trek for us. We'd sort of checked the checked the driving app a few times, and it was meant to be three and a half hours. And uh, we left a little bit late. We I actually booked Jess, like um, they do like a really fancy cream tea, and I booked it for her mm -hmm. birthday ages ago in January. And <laughs> you know, at the time, you're like, yeah, we'd go up the little road trip, and then it gets closer to the tire, and you're like, oh, three and a half hours is quite a long way, actually. <laughs> um, but we were up for it. We quite like a little road trip. And um, yeah, it took us about five hours to get there. So we got there. <laughs> the traffic was <laughs> shocking. <laughs> Just really, really bad traffic. Um, I think we'd made that mistake of checking Google Maps sort of in the evenings, you know, oh. without the general... <laughs> The general like rush hour traffic so we we left about quarter past 10 and we did get there till like gone three so we got wow. there just as the um you know our, our cream tea like time was set for and yeah, we had an hour to basically rush around the garden but thankfully it is quite a compact garden um and i was a little bit worried because i had a few comments sort of saying um it's really really small so you're going quite a long way for a, a small little <laughs> garden jb but um thankfully it was because yeah you can get around it in an hour um but it was a bit of a mad rush <laughs> and it was like jess was kind of leading the charge looking for two very specific roses we wanted the climber and then yeah a bush for the front um so we were like going around quite forensically looking at all the colors and smelling them and seeing seeing what's what and i you're going to ask me which varieties we bought we bought two i cannot remember <laughs> i got no idea one of my patrons was like oh which ones did you really enjoy which ones is your favorite and i'm like yeah that's on the that's on my to-do list for this week <laughs> to get the varieties <laughs> off chess and respond to that comment but um it was lovely it was like immaculate you know, really, really nice little compact, tidy garden, loads of like pergolas, and arches and some nice water features. And it was just, it was very, very nice. I was very impressed. I got some um, video footage and some photographs and stuff. That I'll sneak into a video. But You know, you know when you get a, a text message or WhatsApp message or something and it's got a photo attached, but you don't see the photo, you just see the, the message. And then there's a yeah. little symbol with the photo. Well, JB was doing. I was just telling everybody. I think JB was was there, and I got this this thing go ding. Oh, Jesse, the David Austin garden looks just like your allotment, and I was thinking, oh, really? Oh, I love it. <laughs> click on the picture and it's just like black plastic ripped up. <laughs> I was like, oh, that wasn't quite the picture oh. I had in my head. Thanks. There, I was like, yeah, sorry about that one. So sorry. That was actually in London. That was in um, Hyde Park, the Hyde Park oh, Rose Garden. Oh, we were right. in London the day before. Okay. Um, and yeah, that had just been like dug up everywhere you looked. Yeah. Thankfully, the David Austin Garden was was all fine. They had no problems. Didn't you see, Jibby, that people were coming in and digging up the roses and pinching them from the Hyde Park one? Was that... Not me. No, I didn't Sophie tell that story like was that... ages ago. Right. Were, that I rings thought it was a, a really photograph. vague bell. I thought it was a photograph with like holes where people had dug up the roses. <laughs> oh no! So I posted the photo and said it looks like Jesse's allotment, and then Sophie said, "Have people been digging up the roses?" <laughs> but I think it was just like boxes or badgers or like probably rats, <laughs> you know, like digging stuff up and making holes. Um, yeah. Sorry. Sorry, Jesse. <laughs> 
wasn't quite what I was going for. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> oh, look at, oh, that's not... <laughs> oh, no, that's bad. <laughs> oh, so, my face hurts. So was was oh. what what were the prices like, GB? I, 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 they're fine. Austin? They're like the standard rose prices. I think you you expect to pay about thirty quid for a David Austin rose, um, more or less. You can get them wow. on, on sale sometimes, but yeah, they're pricey. But you do get like I want to say three year guarantee. It might yep. be five. Yeah, is and they're yeah. really generous with it, um, and they've got very good customer service and stuff. I think you can pick them up in sales here and there, um, for for a bit cheaper, kind of at the end of the season and that kind of thing. But uh, yes, was it a was yeah. it a, a bare root plant you got, GB? Uh, no, they're in a they're in a nice pot. They're fully established. Right. So um, right. there you go, pretty good. Maybe the bare roots ones are a bit cheaper. You they are. I was yeah. going to say we used yeah. to sell the bare root ones, and they they certainly weren't that price. They were like twelve. Twelve pounds ish. There you oh. go. Then that's the way to go. We paid thirty dollars <laughs> over here for a bare root and fifty for a potted. Ooh, wow! So it's yeah. a little steeper. Yeah, I think we've we've had a mix. Um, but Jess is in charge of the races. You know, my Jess. Um, <laughs> she can, she can, she can deal with that. <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> you, your, your turn, we've, love. Um, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. The back garden is Jess's responsibility. I got the, the cream the cheese. I got the cream yeah. cheese. <laughs> <laughs> I got the two scones oh, and the cold coffee. <laughs> <laughs> the um, it was really interesting to see. We were we were quite keen to see how they handle black spot, though, which is a um a very common disease that the raises get. It's pretty much everywhere. Um, it and they just seem to aggressively prune it. In, in the David Austin Rose Garden. Um, and there, there are some that looked really healthy. Um, you could see the odd leaf with it. And there were some that you could tell they'd just been like absolutely scalped, you know, like barely a leaf on them, because I think it's the only way you can deal with um, with black mm. spot. But that was quite reassuring to see that mm -hmm. um, that's how they do it, because in the back garden, we've got a few that are exactly the same. You know, some we've chopped off every leaf for, for black spot, and others look okay. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, it was nice though. It was nice. I would recommend it if you live locally. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if it's worth a five hour <laughs> five Hi. hour drive. But we had fun. That's a long <laughs> that's a long time, isn't it? Audrey, you know because yeah. you get David Austin over there. Have they got like a, a subsidiary over there? Are are they exporting them from the UK when you buy a David Austin rose? No, they um I think they get roots like original rootstock from the UK, but they breed them over here. Right, or they right. grow them over here. That makes sense. So yeah, we're um, we're beholding to the people, maybe David Austin himself, who makes them into roses, mm -hmm. but they're just they're just grown here. They did have at the garden. I mean, the actual garden itself is like it's free to enter, which is quite nice. Um, it is quite small though, but they had like a massive. You look over the hedges at one point, and it's just like roses as far as the eye can see. You know, so they do they do do yeah. them all there. They got loads of greenhouses, um, and I wanted to look at it, but Jess was like, "Come on, come on, we've got enough time. Let's go around the garden." <laughs> but it was uh, it was quite impressive. Is is De is is he still alive? Is or is this like a like a? Are there still someone? It was like the the chief man, David Austin, and is he still? Yeah, going? I only learned this very recently when we were at um, Hampton oh, Court a little while back. Because um, I assumed it was kind of the same thing, like that's just a legacy, a legacy name. But um, apparently, he turned up at Hampton Court that day. Jesse, is that right? Yeah, well, like, he's there. You'd seen oh. him, yeah. And I was like, oh, he's a guy. <laughs> he's actually a guy, like walking around. <laughs> that's <laughs> cool. <laughs> uh, yeah, apparently, he's really nice. And when when will you plant them, GB? Oh, they are still in the conservatory. So um, I don't know. That's Jess's job. <laughs> I've done my part. I did it. I did oh, he's, he's, he is taking his foot off the gas, isn't he? He's retiring yeah. this year. He's not doing a bloody thing. <laughs> <laughs> no, they do. They do okay in their pots for for quite a while. Um, so you don't need to be too. I mean, Jess is. Look, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say a bad thing. But Jess loves to buy a plant from a garden centre and then let it sit in the pot for a good two or three weeks. So <laughs> they might still be in there for a little while yet, but they'll be fine. They'll be, yeah, fine. be fine. Yeah. So, 
Well, I was going to ask, just kind of, I mean, we're getting kind of near the end there. What is people, GB, I'm afraid to ask this, what What are you doing then this week in the garden? And are you literally taking your... That... Yeah, I reckon wow. I won't be up there again till Thursday. It depends on the weather, how often I need to go up and water. But, um, you know, the the chilly parts and everything are fine for a really long time. And if we, it, we've just had like two days of like quite torrential rain so everything in the polytunnel is is fine like all the tomatoes in the ground and stuff um i've just really got to go up and water the chilies in pots and that's it so once or twice a week is is okay depending on the weather so um yeah i'll be up there again at some point but i went up this morning so it'll be a little while and just taking my foot off the pedal harvesting absolutely gigantic loads of tomatoes so pretty happy mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm. Well, I guess I know what Jess is going to be doing, building hoop frames. Is that is that your tasks this week then, Jess? Yeah, main main task this week is do something about the frames. Yeah, that's got to be priority number one. Is... Yeah, it's got to be so disheartening to just keep replanting oh, imagine. the stuff that well, keeps getting dug up. That just is like heartbreaking. I'm, I'm absolutely yeah. amazed at the resilience of some of these plants. Like some of the things is just never going to never gonna happen. It's like I caught a bit of, I don't normally watch Gardeners World, but I caught a bit of it last week. And old Monty Don was like, uh, now's the time to snip the ends of your uh, winter squash so that the fruit that's already set is ready to like he's actually got a chance of of you know becoming ripe and uh like mine are just about flowering yeah. <laughs> they've yeah. been out of the ground yeah. every day for like for like the six weeks that they've been planted in there um so i think i'm just uh, another thing i'm going to do is rip a lot of stuff out this week stuff that just really isn't going to recover from what's happened the garlic kale um isn't going to recover it keeps being ripped out and it's bolting because of that you know it's just yeah. so disturbed all the spinach exactly the same uh, mm. what i have been amazed at though is like the pat choy and the komatsuna and all of those kind of like the oriental greens they cope so well with being kicked about in the ground and replanted every morning like you see <laughs> I'm really amazed by it because they're so you know they're so fragile like you think you'd just like bend a leaf and it would snap and yeah. They're just they're incredibly resilient. I'm so impressed with them. It's yeah. it's the it's the words just that we, every morning. Do you know what I mean? You're going up there yeah. like replant them. That's the man. Yeah, that's because I, that's I mean, it, I, the the season's nearly finished. Do you know what I mean? And like, I know. It's, stop it's, saying it's, that, Tony. It's no, no. <laughs> no, what I'm saying is, it's like it's it's tough enough this year. <laughs> the way the weather is, and like the you know, it's, yeah. it's closing in, and Jess has got this on top of all that. Yeah, you know what I mean. So I agree. I agree with that statement. Yeah, there's some there's some <laughs> things that I do, like the pumpkins. I'm just just gonna be like, okay, this isn't gonna happen this year. I need to oh. need to take them out. But um, I mean, most things maybe. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I'm clearing a lot of stuff this week though because it's just not gonna not gonna happen. Mm-hmm. Audrey, then, please yes. say you're doing some gardening. Are you doing some Absolutely. gardening? Oh, there we go. These bloody kids yeah, can't attack um, it, man. <laughs> all the onions have been removed, which gave me some room to get nice. some of my fall things in. So this week will be a whole lot of new plantings from little seedlings that have been hardened off. Uh, I need to bag my pumpkins and my squash. Um, I put those little netted bags over them, or they're kind of big netted bags, but so that the squirrels um, mm-hmm. apparently don't like that on their little paw paws, so I they don't do go that. and try to eat it. So uh, we might actually get a few um, pumpkins, and I've got one of my butternut squash, which is called butterneck squash, it has a really long neck and a really teeny seed pod at the bottom. So you get more um, actual flesh out flesh. of it. Nice. And I've got that growing over a trellis, and it seems to be doing great. And um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm actually looking forward to these next couple of months. Maybe maybe get a few harvests. Mm. <laughs> we'll we're, see. Not much good, I mean... we're not much good at, at gardening and showing our produce. <laughs> this is like the potty mouth garden club. And really... <laughs> We well, haven't got I have a bunch of pictures I need to get on Instagram. 
because we have had some nice harvests. We um, had a whole bunch of potatoes that came back as volunteers because mm -hmm. apparently we didn't dig them out quite good enough. Uh, so those are all out, and that was a lot of potatoes. Nice. So we are s somehow still getting some, mm. you know, some nice harvests, but not the ones that you can really do much other than fresh eat with. Mm -hmm. Right. It's not, well, not a good foot, putting up canning year. So mm. yeah. it has, I think it's been an amazing year over here for berries. I don't know if you're finding this, like the raspberries, mm. blackberries, all of the berries that are kind of the late, the later fruiters have been incredible. I think it was probably the amount of rain that we had early on. Mm. Yeah. Um, that I would say Makes that sense. the only thing that I've got, like you're talking about processing, I think the only thing that I've got that's really up for that is just tons of raspberries. So I'll get, get some jam on this week. Nice. Yeah. I bought two uh, blackberry bushes that I'm trying to figure out where I want to put them. Mm. Because I always hear uh, the British gardeners talking about brambles and how they're everywhere. Ah, I don't mm. want them everywhere. I just want a couple nice bushes. But I don't know if they're the, the kind that don't. Are they like raspberries? I they'll be all yeah. over <laughs> yeah they are they're, they oh. they make raspberries look like docile little loves <laughs> oh so None. should i put them in pots maybe well, it de are they yeah. oh, it depends what sort are they are they like thornless they're thornless are because they, uh, they're very tame they what they, they the, if they are they like oregon is it oregon type they've got um they're no thorns and they've got much frillier leaves Okay. Um, they're really tame. <laughs> they're really tame if it's them. Like you can train them and they're all very beautiful and they stay in their place. But if okay. it's like a proper bramble, okay. it'll, it'll take over. Okay. Yeah. They were coming over. Audrey, the proper brambles were coming over my wall and, and rooting into my lawn. And that was getting cut every time. But it just even that wasn't stopping them. Horrific things, to be honest, and like good, okay. thick. You know, like when you go down and try and chop the the good, like thick. oh yeah, oh wow. Okay, I was <laughs> thinking about planting them by my bug bin out there, kind of like one behind it, maybe one at the side. See, I wouldn't be but worried about your no. bug bin. I wouldn't be worried about that. It's more your house. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you plant it there. Worry about your house. You know what I mean? Well, that's about as far away from my house as I can get. My garage, it might, you know, be happy to attack. But uh, yeah, so maybe that out there is is the best place to put them. I don't in know. In a field far away. If they're <laughs> if they're the thornless ones, they're tame. So they they yeah, won't exactly. spread too much. Okay, so maybe really large pots just for the first year or two and see. Maybe one you, then, habit. Even them, you know, that I had some raspberries in, and when everyone came round to like, help us clean up, they were just left in a bucket, th three <laughs> potato buckets, and they grew with no soil, just left there. They were a wee yeah. again. Do you yeah, know what I mean? They want to grow. It's, I mean, yeah. they're still growing, still coming out where I've got the tomatoes though, up there. So on, a, on okay. another scale of brambles, another yeah. scale. Another level. Completely. Okay, so plant at your own risk is what I'm hearing. <laughs> <laughs> top of the hour. It. Top of the hour. JB. JB, where can we where can we find you slumbering eh, this yes. week? Eh, you can find watch me your occasionally. Watching Netflix and getting yeah. tears. I wish. No, it's just going to be fixing the house. Be I'll up be the up the, yeah, I'll be up the back of the house again. But um. When I'm back, you can find me at Naturally JB on YouTube and Instagram and Patreon. And again, that was a lovely little post there from the heart. So, yes, if anyone wants to support JB or Jess and Audrey, get your finger out and get a Patreon. That would be <laughs> lovely. I will jump in there and support you. Jesse, where can we find you? At uh, G at Plot 37. G. 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 <laughs> Surname, please. Um, yeah, <laughs> Jesse at Plot 37 on YouTube, Instagram, and Patreon. There we go. Audrey. Yes, here's my where, list. Where can we find the fantastic Audrey? <laughs> uh, Real Food Comes Dirty. Uh, dot com, Instagram, YouTube, and Facebook. Hey. <laughs> hey. <laughs> 
Is that still a thing? Is that is that still good? I know it's so funny because I do have a I have a thing on Facebook. Problem is, I never sign into Facebook anymore. Yeah, because I, I feel like that's where old people go to bitch about politics. Oh yeah, <laughs> I am yes. really, I'm really not interested in reading any of that. <laughs> um, but I realize I probably should check in on that page occasionally or just like get it off. I think you hit so the nail on the head, Audrey, because that all that on Facebook for me is all to do with like science fiction and everything like that. When I mm. started Starship Sober, <laughs> and it's still it's exactly what you see. There's still that oh. bitching about politics, about, you know, all I'm different. Like, where did like... all the cool kids go who used mm. to show us pictures of what they were eating? It's all gone. <laughs> like, that it's was all when left. it was fun, right? When the you know, twelve year olds were posting their dinner. But I'm like, now I have no interest in reading that stuff. Yeah. So Well, listen, everyone who's in the chat, a huge thank you. Yes, it's lovely to kind of yes, see you indeed. again. Marion, Joanne, Christine, yes. Ashley, the Oh, Jaxi JB's put putty cell in there as well. There. So, <laughs> Chris, Anna, thank you. It's indeed. If you just want to join us, that would be fantastic. The Potty Mouth Perion and myself is all one combined. Perion there, as little as two pound, or there's JB or Jesse as well. That would be nice. Support us. It would be fantastic. <laughs> Look after yourselves. Take good care. Thanks, so. Bye. Bye. Bye.